So here's problem number six. It's from the 2017 AP Calc AB exam. It's a non-calculator question, and, and you kind of have this weird collection of stuff that they start you off with. They, they give you a function f defined right here. Uh, they give you another function g. They just tell you that it's differentiable, but then what they provide you with is they provide you with the values of g of x at certain x's, and then also values of the derivative at those same x's. And then they also talk about a new function, h, that is going to be this graph right here, and all those little pieces that we see are just five line segments. So we've got three functions, f, g, and h, and we're going to see new functions defined throughout number six as we make our way through the pieces of the problem. Now what they ask you to do in part a is they ask you to find the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equals pi. So if you're looking for the slope of the tangent line, you definitely need to use the derivative and evaluate it at the x-coordinate of the point of tangency if you're looking to determine that slope. So the derivative here of cosine of 2x is going to require a chain rule, derivative of the outer function, inner function left inside, times the derivative of the inner function to finish it off, and then add on the derivative of e to the sine of x. And that's another chain rule. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Well, we see e to the inner function, and then times the derivative of the inner function to finish it off. We wanted to know the slope of the tangent line at the x value of pi. And so we're going to have to put pi into this derivative in place of all the x's. And when you put pi in place of all the x's, you know, this technically depends on numbers alone. Uh, I went ahead and used the unit circle to tidy things up a little bit further. 2 pi is right here on the unit circle. Sine of 2 pi would, would be 0. So that first term basically just becomes 0. Sine of pi, well, well pi on the unit circle, as I start from the positive x-axis, puts me right here. And if I'm looking for sine of pi, I need the x-coordinate, excuse me, the y-coordinate from that point. So sine of pi is 0. And then cosine of pi is the x-coordinate from that point, which is negative 1. So I end up with 0 plus e to the 0 times negative 1. And if you simplify, you end up with negative 1 as the slope of the tangent line to f at pi. In part b, they do define a new function for us. They define k to be the function h of f of x. And now they want us to find k prime of pi. So this is an outer function, inner function situation again. So they, they already kind of tested us on the chain rule a couple times in part A, and now it's, it's another chain rule. The derivative of the outside function is going to be h prime. We're going to leave the inner function f of x inside that derivative, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inner function to finish our chain rule. What is k prime of pi? Well, we would just put pi in place of this x, pi in place of this x. So what I noticed right here is that we have h prime of f of pi. So a little calculation that I did at the top of the screen here was to figure out what f of pi was. Right, Just put pi there, put pi there, use the unit circle to tidy that up a bit too. And you end up with 2 for f of pi. And then here's f prime of pi at the end. Well, well we have that from part A, right? f prime of pi was negative 1. That was our result from part A. And now we, we see h prime of 2 times negative 1. So what is h prime of 2? Well, here's a graph of h. h prime of 2 is going to be the slope of the tangent line to the graph of h at the x of 2. Well, this is a line segment right here. And so the slope of the tangent line at 2 is going to be the same thing as the slope of that line itself. And so if I go from 0, 0 to this point right here, I'm looking at a rise of negative 1 and a run of 3. So I'm looking at a slope for h of negative 1 third at the x of 2. Negative 1 third times negative 1 gives me a value of 1 third for k prime of pi. In part c, they define yet another function, m. And m is right here. And they ask us to find m prime of 2. So if you think about the main operation happening within the function m, it's a product. And so taking the derivative of m is going to require a product rule. So here's the derivative of the first piece of that product. The derivative of g of negative 2x is yet another chain rule, right? Derivative of the outside function, leave the inner function inside, times the derivative of the inner function, times the original second function from the product, and then plus the original first function from the product, 
times the derivative of that second function from the product. Well, we wanted m prime of 2, so we're going to have to put 2 in place of all of these x's. So when I put 2 here, negative 2 times 2 gives me a negative 4 inside g prime. Just copying that times negative 2 down, putting 2 in place of that x. 2 in place of this x gives me a negative 4 appearing inside of the function g. And then 2 goes in place of that x as well. So this right here depends on g prime, h, g, and h prime. We're going to have to use the table and the graph in order to, to clean that up and make it depend on numbers alone. So what is g prime of negative 4? Well, g prime of negative 4 straight out of the table is negative 1. What is h of 2? So h of 2 is going to be the y value from this graph of h at the x of 2. And so using a rise of negative 1 and a run of 3 to get from this point on the graph of h to this point on the graph of h, that's going to leave us with a y value at, of negative 2 thirds that corresponds to the x value of 2. And then g of negative 4, well, that's something that we steal right out of the table. g of negative 4 is 5. And then h prime of 2, well, well that we used back in part b, right? We, we looked at the slope of this line segment in part b for h prime of 2 previously, and we have to do it one more time. And that slope ended up being negative 1 third. So this is fine to leave your answer looking like this. If you clean it up a little bit, what you end up with is you end up with negative 3. And then the last part of this one says, is there a number c? in the closed interval negative 5 to negative 3 such that g prime of c equals negative 4 justify your answer so they're asking us to try and decide whether or not a certain derivative value has to exist so what i think instantly when i see something like this is i think well the mean value theorem guarantees the existence of a certain derivative value it guarantees that the derivative has to equal the average rate of change of the function on an interval where the function is both continuous and differentiable. So I'm going to attempt to use the mean value theorem here. I just need to kind of give myself that green light that lets me proceed with the theorem. So let's see, what do we know? And we're applying this to g, right? So what do we know about the function g? Well, they told us the function g is differentiable. The two boxes that have to be checked in order to use the mean value theorem have to be that your function is differentiable. Well, if the function is differentiable, it's got to be continuous. So we get both of our check marks. That gives us the green light to go ahead and proceed with the mean value theorem. So what is the average rate of change of the function g on the interval negative 5 to negative 3? So that's just going to be a simple slope calculation for the function g across this range of x values. And if we take these y values, these function values for g from out of the table, we need g of negative 5, which is 10. We need g of negative 3, which is 2. Uh, the denominator is negative 2. Well, 8 divided by negative 2 gives us an average rate of change of negative 4. What's the conclusion? Well, by the mean value theorem, there's got to be a value C somewhere between negative 5 and negative 3 such that the instantaneous rate of change, the derivative value, is equal to this average rate of change.